Welcome guys, this video is about web sockets. Now I think web sockets are the best of all four of the ways Signal R works by far. So in this video I'm basically going to describe what a web application would be like if it was a perfect world, which means we're using web sockets, right? So basically I'm describing web sockets when I do this. Well the very first thing is I would say it has to be bi-directional. By this I mean there is communication from the client to the server and from the server to the client. So now the server can push data to the client without the client first having to ask for it. In order to do this, we have to open up a persistent connection. So a persistent connection is kind of just like an agreement between the client and the server. So the client basically comes up to the server, gets on one knee and says, server, Will you use WebSockets with me? And the server's been waiting for this moment its entire life. The server says yes! Now, from this moment on, for better or for worse, the client and the server have an agreement to use WebSockets. And this agreement is kind of like agreements these days. Uh, they only last until one of them decides they no longer want to be using WebSockets. The end. So, in this situation, if the client clicked the X to close the browser or shut down the app or whatever it is, this would end the persistent connection. It's not going to stay connected even when the browser is not open. When you X out of your browser, all connections end. The second part of a really good web app would be that it is multi-user. This one is important. Can you imagine a website where you can only have one person connected at a time? Well, with WebSockets, you can have multiple people connected at one time, all interacting with one another. So to go along with the other example, this server wasn't very faithful because now it has persistent connections with everybody. Like millions. I didn't even know a server could be so unfaithful. The next thing I would say is that the web application is full duplex. What this means is that the client can send data to the server and the server can send data to the client at the same time. The fourth thing, I think the web app should be asynchronous. And there's a 98% chance I'm going to spell this wrong, so I'm just apologizing up front. Did I get it? Let's hope so. Yeah, that's right, I checked. <laughs> well, this is basically everything WebSockets is. It is bi-directional, multi-user, full duplex, and asynchronous. That is just way too awesome for one thing. <laughs> now, some of the other technologies we talked about have some of these. For example, event source, it is asynchronous, but it's not full duplex. Remember, it's only one way. Same for forever frame. Well, WebSockets basically combines everything awesome into one giant delicious piece of cake. No, pie. Yeah, pie's better than cake. Well, unless it's gross pie, only apple pie. That's good. So as you can see, I get a little bit excited when it comes to WebSockets. They're really cool and it's awesome that SignalR implements them. So WebSockets is going to use its own protocol, WS. I bet you can't guess what that stands for. So I'm pretty sure all of the modern browsers support WebSockets, although it's still kind of new, so there may still be some limitations. That being said, you should still learn them because they are the future of the web. And the best way to learn them is through SignalR because it does all the magical stuff for you. If it's not supported, boom. Don't even have to worry about it. It just does something else. That's all I really got to say about WebSockets. I know, wasn't the most technical tutorial, but that's all you really need to know to understand them. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.